G'day, I'm Luke from Drifter and I wanted to show you some axes we're doing now that we're putting on the website and this is them here. So it's called a Holtendorf axe from Sweden uh, and we're making our own sheath for it. So it's a beautiful axe, it's hand forged, made in Sweden. Um, it's reasonably light and uh, just a really good length, 650mm handle, um, fairly light head so it's something that you can easily use one handed and that extra length means that you can really get a good swing on it. It's the ideal size, um, you know, for you know carrying your four-wheel drive and camping. So now we buy these uh, unfinished, and that's what they turn up like. So they've sort of got this protective edge on them, a bit of wax, and um, you know it doesn't it doesn't have a proper edge on it. Okay, it's just been rough ground and comes with a sticker on it and a few marks there. So what we're going to do is dress this up, dress up the handle, sharpen the edge and making it a really nice product. And also we're going to make the sheath. So I'm going to quickly show you, you know, how we do that. All right, so uh, the first thing is we'll grind up the ax. I've got this machine here. Um, it does that. A mate of mine made this for me and it's a special grinder uh, It goes reasonably slow and that's important because we don't want to go too fast on that uh, grinding otherwise it'll heat up and, and destroy the, um, the edge on it. So it's a reasonably slow machine and we've got a pivot point here so we'll show you how that works Rightio, so All right, so we've got to get this exactly vertical. Right, oh. So we're just going to start grinding that edge, and um, You can see that there, it's just starting to take that off. And we've got this really nice pivot point here, it's adjustable. So we can do each side and get a really nice, you know, curved ground edge. Now that there's got no heat in it. Um, so, and that's what we want, keep it nice and cool. I know. So that's coarse ground now. And what we'll do is just uh, change this belt over. To medium. Yeah, a friend of mine, John Forbes, he made this whole machine. Very clever bloke. Uh, he's got a lathe and milling machine and made the whole thing up himself. So it's just ideal for this. So pretty much now we've, we've got the shape we want and we've taken down you know on the rough grind you know where we want it to be. Now we're just really giving it a bit of a polish um, you know, from the medium to the fine belt.
Oh yeah, so now I put on fine belt. And that'll just polish it up nicely. That's where we want it, so I'll just take that off. It's a fair bit of work, and it um, takes a fine touch to get it just right. So at the moment, I'm doing all of these myself and um, kind of sort of learning to do it as well. You can see that there, it's a beautiful edge and um, you know that's, I mean that's basically almost razor sharp right there. Now you can see the difference between the two, All right that's as we buy them and that's once we've got it to that stage. So we'll hone that up a little bit. Shortly. Now, next thing really for the moment is to uh, make that sheath and um, we'll do that here as well. So, now this is three and a half mil cowhide. Um, you can see it's beautiful leather, nicely finished. Alright, so we're just going to trace that out. I've just got a pattern there that fits nicely. There's a couple other things we need is um, back one of these and one of those as well. All right, so I'm just going to cut that out. And it's a bit of a tricky job. I need a basically brand new razor blade. It's thick, leather's very tough. Yeah, I really enjoy working with leather. I've been doing it for a long time and uh, been making these belts out of rear hide. And, um, yeah, I've been coming up here with Kaido most afternoons lately and making these axe sheaths. And, um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Good way to get a, good way to get rid of a bit of a stress at the end of the day, come up here and work with leather, you know. So as you can see, of course, they're all handmade which is, you know, fairly special. It's rare to get, you know, an axe sheep like these made in, in Australia, handcrafted. And as you'll see too, there's, there's a lot of work involved. Now this leather's not cheap either. You know, it's quite expensive to have finished cow hide like this. Um, you know, hide like this, 1.1 square metres, 1.2 square meters. Uh, it's almost 
almost 200 bucks for a hide that size. So it's quite expensive. And um, also the copper rivets we're using as well aren't cheap. And I'll just cut this piece here out. So if you really wanted to, you could probably make one up yourself if you didn't want to buy one. So I'll pretty much show you how to do it. But um, you've got to have, like anything, you've got to have all the right equipment really to do it. Right, so let's cut those out. Rightio. Just a couple little things there we want to do. This is a special um, product from Gilly Stevenson. It's a wax. Uh, leather care product, so it's made out of beeswax. Um, it's a really nice product. Gilly Stevenson's a great little company over in Western Australia. Just want to soften that a little bit. I'm just going to knock those holes out. It's just a leather punch. I made this uh, block up the other day. This is a log that we cut and here at Drifter. So that was the, uh, that's where we cut it down really. So I just sort of flattened it off a little bit and um, put on some wheels and you can see that's a beautiful log. Um, so that's you know just the ideal for what we're doing here. Neaten it up a little bit. We just want to get that nice and even. Now we'll swap this belt over again. We want the coarse belt on here. Good thing with this machine is we can use it for the leather as well. So that's very handy. So we're just going to trim this now, some of the spots, and we'll do the rest later. This is the ledging tool. It just takes a little bevel off, as you can see. Just puts a really nice finish on them. piece here, I'll show you what that's for. You need a bit of depth into the sheath for the uh, head to fit into. And that's going to go in there like that. Alright, so, so I've got a stamp here, you can see that. Uh, our drifter logo and drifter. Side. You can see that there, stamped in really nice, so that's quite unique. So, a good thing now is we can uh, stamp someone's name in this really easily. Right, so, if you want your name in, we can't write lots of things, you know, but we can basically write your name, no worries.
So it makes it really personalised and uh, you know quite special to have your name engraved in it. Okay, you can see that there. You know, um, that's going to be there forever. And yeah, we can easily put somebody's name in if we need to. There's also a little bit of room on the other side, you know, to put somebody's, um, you know, write something there. So it's best to do that first. Alright, so now we're just going to put this together. Now, these copper rivets are uh, really nice. Uh, they're not cheap, quite expensive copper rivets. They're almost um, 50 cents each, but they're well worth it. So it's just a matter of feeding them through. Like that. Now the washer goes on over the top. And that sort of locks it down for the moment. Alright. Until we're ready to hammer them on. Once these rivets are in, you know they'll never come out. You can see that there, we're just going to cut those ends off. It's important to get them just the right height. And I'm going to keep hold of those because again, very expensive copper. See that, so we can um, we'll melt that down later on in a little forge, and God, I can make something with it. Oh, right, yeah, so now we just gotta hit those down. And it takes a bit of practice to get these right. These copper rivets are originally used for. You know, saddlery and pack saddles, and that's where I got uh, to learn how to use them. I mean, they're pretty simple once you get the hang of it. Yeah, just got to be tapped down neatly. But as you can see, quite labour intensive. There's a lot of work making these sheaths. But that's the good thing about it, you know, it's quite rare to get something like this, you know, really handmade. And, um, look at that. You know, those will never come off. Yeah, it just makes a really nice finish. There's a small, um, you know, dome section here you can, just going to give that a whack. Just to smooth off the top a little bit. Alright, I'll show you a photo here. Now, um, this is actually my mate in Czech Republic, Leos. He's the one who took this photo and it's in his book that he's, um, he publishes a lot of books of all his adventures and travels. That, of course, is me when I was um, about 22. And it's in, the, in a saddlery shop um, or, or a saddle room in America. I was working there mill packing and um, I used to love it there after work. I just spent a lot of my time there repairing saddles there was you know uh, 50 years worth of old saddles and bridles and halters and pack saddles and um, I spent a lot of time in there so that's sort of where I learned how to do this sort of um, this sort of work and we used a lot of copper rivets there so um, yeah it's quite handy 
a lot of my travels about back when I was drifting is um, you know really been handy when I've started the business and a lot of those experiences I had when I was traveling around you know I've really been able to use in you know products we've made and uh, you know the different things we've been able to do